Welcome. Welcome, you guys. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Stone Street's Nursery Farm. So today we're going to take a drive and we'll hear about the history of our farm and then we'll stop and visit with some of our mares. If you guys are ready, then we'll head out. So the wind is kind of crazy today since we have a storm blowing in. So if it gets too loud at any point, just let me know. I do have a buffer. So I'll do my best to keep the wind out of your, out of the sound. So this is our nursery farm. This is where all of our foals are born each year. So we have three properties here in Kentucky and this is the smallest of the three. So this farm is about 460 acres. We also have a yearling farm off of Highway 60. That one's about 600 acres. Then we have a second mare facility further down Old Frankfurt Pike. That's about 800 acres. And we full out at this property because this is the closest to some of the best equine clinics in the world. So we want you know, with foaling, it's a very time sensitive process. So if for whatever reason, we have to send a mare to the vet, we can have her on the van and to the vet within 10 minutes from this property. So as we go by, you notice this barn. This is our Cabernet barn. So this is the first of five barns that we have here on the farm. All of the barns here are named after wine varieties. There's a very specific reason for that. So that's a nod to our founder, Mr. Jeff Stone Street Jackson. And Mr. Jackson was a, an incredible man. He grew up during the Great Depression and he, um, he put himself through law school. He became very successful. He was very successful and he started his own law firm. Um, and he'd always had a passion for agriculture and he was able to pursue that uh, with the purchase of a pear farm, pear orchard in the 70s. He then converted that property into a winery and he would use the grapes that he grew there every year to sell to other local wineries. And for the most part, it was a passion project for him. Uh, he wasn't making his own wine for several years until one year there was a change in the weather that caused a change in the sugar content of his grapes and made them sweeter. So the other local wineries didn't want to purchase them because they thought it would change the flavors of their wines. So rather than you know letting all those good grapes go to waste, Mr. Jackson, he was a very shrewd businessman so he recognized that there was a gap in the market for a high quality but low priced wine. So he capitalized on this and he produced what became the Kendall Jackson Vintners Reserve Chardonnay, which is one of the most popular wines here in America. It's won several awards. And from there, he, that blossomed into the Jackson Family Wines portfolio and became very successful, both the Vintners Reserve and the portfolio as, as a whole. And he had so much success in his first passion project that Mr. Jackson was able to pursue a second. And that passion became, or was always thoroughbred racing. So he grew up watching racing. He actually remembered sitting on his uncle's shoulders and watching Seabiscuit run and the Bay Meadows handicap. So he came into this industry in 2005. He purchased this property as well as 95 mares for a little over $21 million. He had his first graded stakes winner in 2006. We had uh, Forest Music won the Honorable Miss Stakes. Forest Music's now retired to the band. She's the dam of McLean's music, as well as Graded Stakes winners uh, Electric Forest and Kentuckian. So after 2006 and 2007, Mr. Jackson bought into a horse you all have probably heard of. His name is Curlin. He was a Horse of the Year 2007 and 2008. He won the Preakness Stakes. He won the Breeders' Cup Classic. He won the Dubai World Cup. He was an incredible racehorse. And now he's an incredible sire. We have a lot of foals on the farm that are by Curlin, a few of whom we'll see in the barn that we're going to stop and visit. And then in 2009, Mr. Jackson had an incredible third consecutive Horse of the Year winner in Rachel Alexandra. So Rachel won the Kentucky Oaks, which would have been run here on Friday. But in lieu of um, the race itself, you will be able to meet or have a meet and greet with Rachel Alexandra. You tune into our Facebook Live on Friday. We'll visit with her and see some of the foals in our Zinfandel barn, one of the wine names. 
So these are mares and bulls at Merlot. We visited them in a previous live stream. When Rachel Alexander was a, a uh, monster racehorse on the track. She was a champion. She was a champion two, three year old filly in 2009. And um, she was also horse of the year in 2009. She won the Preakness Stakes. She was the first filly in 85 years to do so. Mr. Jackson entered her in the Preakness Stakes after purchasing her after the Kentucky Oaks. She won the Kentucky Oaks by 20 and a half lengths. That's the largest win margin of that race. And in addition to the Preakness Stakes, Rachel won the Haskell. She was the first female to ever win the Woodward Stakes. And she also defeated both of the other classic winners of 2009. So she beat Mind That Bird, who won the Kentucky Derby, and she beat Summer Bird, who won the Belmont. So she was amazing on the racetrack. And so when Rachel retired, Mr. Jackson, he had these two champions. And he was a big believer in the adage of breeding the best of the best and hoping for the best. So he bred the two together. And he passed away in 2011, shortly after he learned that Rachel was in full to Curlin. She was expecting a colt. So in honor of Mr. Jackson and his dream for this operation, that colt was named Jess's Dream. And Jess's Dream is now standing at Ocala Stud. His first bull is a two-year-old this year, so we're looking to see them on the racetrack. And uh, Rachel did have a second bull. She had Rachel's Valentina the following year. She's by Bernardini. So Bernard <laughs> Bernardini also won the Preakness Stakes. So both Rachel Rachel's Valentina is both by a Preakness winner and out of a Preakness winner, which is pretty incredible. And we'll see here, uh, we'll see her here in a little bit, but she is in one of our larger paddocks, so she may not be as close as she was in a previous video. So following Mr. Jackson's passing, uh, Barbara Banky became our owner and our proprietoress. Uh, she was married to Mr. Jackson and she really fell in love with racing by going to the races. And she actually had her own stable. Before she uh, took the helm of Stone Street Stable, she had Grace Stables, which stood for Girls Rule and Confidently Endure. And she only raced fillies in her stable. One of her more famous uh, racehorses was Hot Dixie Chick. She was a grade one winner. She set a track record at Churchill Downs. She's now retired to the band. And she has a few daughters that are active in our band as well. So this is Rachel's paddock here on the left. It doesn't look like Rachel's going to make an appearance today. So this is a larger paddock. This one's about 35 acres. So she and her two paddock mates definitely have a choice to avoid us if they so choose. Miss Binky, once she took the helm here, she's really been steering us to new heights. So she purchased our training center down in Ocala. Um, that's where we train all of our future racehorses as well as racehorses for other clients. Some of our graduates include our champions like Good Magic, who's a champion two-year-old, as well as my Miss Aurelia. She's a champion two-year-old and she won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. We also train for um, E5. So Rushing Fall, do you want the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies turf? as well as Unique Bella for Don Alberto. She was a dual champion. And Bricks and Mortar, who was Horse of the Year last year, he was trained at our training center as well. A visit from the farrier here. And one of Miss Banky's big goals is finding the best brood mares possible and breeding the best foals in the world. So in pursuit of that, we've really been pursuing and she's been going all around the world to find the best bloodlines possible. And two of the mares that we'll see today were uh, foaled in other countries. So we've got one from Australia, one from Argentina. We've got champions from all over the world. So Lady Aurelia was one of our first international champions. Or she was the first international champion that we bred. She was also trained at our training center. She was the very first American trained horse to win a Cartier Award, which is the end of the year awards in um, the UK. We have a champion two-year-old filly, and Lady Aurelia's dam is the Wildcat Speed. She was a champion Puerto Rico. So there's one of two champions from Puerto Rico that we have. The other is my Wandi's girl. And Lady Aurelia is a great embodiment of what we're trying to do. You know, take our American bred horses all around the world and show that we have the best blood stock possible. So we'll come around. So just a few of the mares that we'll see here today. 
I'll find a good spot to park and then we can go and visit the horses at our Pinot Noir barn. So the five barns that we have here are Pinot Noir, Merlot, Cabernet, Chardonnay, and Zinfandel. Pinot Noir. The barns at our yearling farm are also named after wines. <laughs> nice and slow here around the barn. So all the mares on this farm are arranged by their expected foaling dates. So when a mare visits the stallion, uh, we can check her for pregnancy two weeks later. If she is in foal, then we take that date that she visited the stallion and we count forward 11 months. And that's how we can estimate when she's gonna have her foal. So these mares will be um, grouped by those dates and they'll come over from our second mare facility to this farm. So each barn, each of the, the wine varieties will have mares that will foal at different times of the year. For example, our Chardonnay barn, those foals were born in January and February. So they are the oldest that we have here. So I'll pull off here. Park so we can go see some of the mares up close. So the mares in this Cabernet barn have their foals um, in March and April. So we do have a few in the barn that have not foaled yet. There are two here. So these two are getting ready to fold. They do any day now. That's why they're up here in the smaller paddock so we can keep an eye on them. Get a little closer. So we have these small paddocks so that our foals, when they're born, they can go into these smaller paddocks. It gives them some time that they can relax, they can mature before they graduate to the larger paddocks that we saw as we drove along. So I mentioned this farm is about 460 acres. These paddocks range in size, the big ones do at least, between about 20 to 30 acres. Each barn can hold 20 mares, or that has 20 stalls, so 20 mares and then their foals. So here we have mentioned two mares that are still in foal. So this mare here, this is Cabo Queen. Cabo Queen is the dam of a horse named Sally's Curlin. She's a dual grade three winner. Cabo Queen is in full to McLean's music. So I mentioned Forest Music earlier on. She was the first graded stakes winner in Stone Street Stables. Hi, Cabo Queen. And McLean's music was her son. So McLean's music, he scored the, uh, the highest buyer of any debut winner when he raced. He's now standing at uh, Hillendale. Several of our stallions are at Hillendale. McLean's Music sired a classic winner in his first crop with a, a cloud computing. Cloud computing was also a graduate of our Stone Street Training Center. Though we don't house any of those stallions we're affiliated with on our farms, our mares will travel to the stallion. So when you're breeding thoroughbreds, it's live cover. So the mare and stallion have to meet. This is Princess Julia. Princess Julia is out of folklore, who is a uh, champion. Uh, she was a champion two-year-old filly. She's in full to go supper this year. So Miss Banky uh, loves to own, name horses after her friends and her family. So Julia here was named after her daughter, Julia. She's one of two Julias we'll see today, as well as Katie. We have two Katies that we'll see here very shortly. Like I said, these two are up in the smaller paddock because they're getting close to foaling. So we monitor the foals during the mares during the day, but they usually foal at night. So when they come up into the barn, they will stay in their stalls. We'll watch them overnight for any signs of foaling. We 
We have a few foals in this barn that have graduated to these larger paddocks. We'll see some here very soon. So this next group, <laughs> this is Dashing Debbie is the closest to us. How's the wind for you guys? Does it sound okay? I'm trying to buffer as much as I can. So here's Dashing Debbie. Dashing Debbie is the dam of Dawn the Destroyer. She raced in our racing stable. She raced in the Breeders' Cup last year and she won a race called the Interboro Stakes. And she's just joined the band. So fillies that race in our racing stable will come and join the Broodmare Band. You can see their families grow and expand over the years. And the little guy laying in the grass there, that's her Curlin Colt she had this year. She shares this paddock with Katie's Kiss, who's in the back, and her foal is hiding behind that tree pen. She's got a Blaine Colt. And over here, this is one of our international horses, and our international mares. So this is Time for Roses. She's got a Curlin filly. Some of our other international mares that we have, I mentioned My Wondies Girl, as well as Devo yeah, Cat Speed from Puerto Rico. <laughs> we also have Bounding, who's a champion in New Zealand. She was bred in Australia. We have Hillaby, who's a champion in Canada. I don't know if you can hear Katie's Kisses Full calling out to you guys. Time for roses. She has a little curl in Philly. <laughs> so these guys, because all their mares were due around the same time, they're all born around the same time. So they're all in the same developmental stages. They're able to go out into this paddock get together. So the mares, they'll start out in these paddocks by themselves, just with the foals. And then as the foals grow, they'll be introduced to other mares. And they can mature here in these paddocks. And they also form bonds in the herd. So these guys will be together and they'll go out in groups together. They'll stay in these groups, even when they're weaned. So the foals stay behind at the nursery and the mares go to our second foaling, or second mare facility. High time for roses. And the, the foals stay, they'll be in the same group that they've been with their whole lives. So even when they're weaned, they have that comfort that they're with those same foals they've known all their lives. So it's more like kids going off to summer camp. Hi, Philly. This is time for roses, Curl and Philly. We'll move over here. I'm not sure if Erin is in the stream, but she requested to see Kawaii Katie. So here's Kawaii Katie. She had an Uncle Mo Colt this year. Kawaii Katie was a graded stakes winner in our racing stable. at this very handsome colt. Hi. <laughs> oh, I was afraid of that. I was trying to go as quietly as I could so I wouldn't spook him. So 
they'll spend some time in these smaller paddocks and they graduate to the bigger fields over here. So this group we've visited before. So on the left, that's Dreaming of Julia and her Curlin filly. Coral Sun, she's got a Bedagliadoro colt. Then the back, that's Rachel's Valentina and her Curlin filly. So these guys have just moved into this larger paddock. Their foals were born on the 6th. It's about the amount of time that they'll spend in a small paddock before they all get to move on. And since they were in that small paddock, they've formed a bond with one another. Not uncommon to see these guys up close to one another in the paddock. Ask the Moon is doing well. She has not foaled yet this year. So I couldn't see your questions very well as I was driving. So if you guys have any questions that I didn't answer, do so now. Got a storm rolling in, but for now it's really lovely here. You see off in the distance, that's the Keeneland Water Tower. So you can get an idea of our location geographically. Now, a lot of our foals will go to the Keeneland September sale. Last year we sold $20 million worth of yearlings. All, between all of the yearling sales. And this Curlin filly that G Dreaming of Julia has this year, she's a full sister to a filly that sold last year for over a million dollars at the Keeneland September sale. We don't have any Jess's Dream foals this year. So we choose the stallions based on uh, their features and how they'll complement those of our mares. So as I mentioned before, the old adage of breeding the best of the best kind of what we're thinking of when we go, when we're planning the breeding for each mare. Rachel Alexandra is doing well, so we'll see her on Friday. <laughs> so we have about 80 foals a year. We're not done foaling just yet. So we've got a little under, under 160. We have about 100 active brood mares. So they'll stay out if it's just raining. If the storm gets any more serious, if there's lightning, then they will come up and they'll stay up in the barn. Yes, we do breed to other stallions. So we breed a lot to, you know, Curlin, Good Magic, McLean's Music, those stallions, but we also breed to Medagli de Oro. That's the sire of that colt <laughs> that's running out there in the paddock. And um, our homebred Valadorna, she had her first foal this year by Into Mischief. So each year, some mares will get a uh, will take a year off, particularly if they have a late foal. They might take a break. Um, so the amount of mares that we breed or don't breed will change each year, and it's all based on the individual mare herself. So each mare is an individual and each farm, or each year is an individual. So we want to make sure that her health and happiness is always the priority. So signs of foaling, the mare will kind of get restless. Uh, she'll paw, she might get up and down in her stall. And leading up to the foaling, you may see uh, some milk drip. So when her udder is nice and full, then you know she's getting close to foaling. And yes, we will upload the Rachel visit to YouTube. So we'll upload all of these tours. If you miss them live, we're gonna save them all and upload them to YouTube. We've got a playlist going so you can go and catch up on all the tours that we've done so far. We have one Justify filly this year. We don't have any American Pharaohs. So we have three facilities here in Kentucky. This is the smallest. We have a yearling farm. Then we have a second mare facility. And we also have our training center in Ocala. 
So these are the last, <laughs> the last two that we'll visit with. This is Keen Pauline. Hi. Keen Pauline's a homebred graded stakes winner. Oh, easy guys. So, and she's getting <laughs> chased off by Roberta Turner. Roberta Turner has a Union Rags filly this year. She's actually named after our yearling manager. We do have some violence babies. We have one out of Spring Party, who's the dam of a horse named Marzo. He's a graded stakes winner. See if I can get a close up. Keen Pauline and her filly have almost matching faces. Oh uh, no, our attention is being monopolized by Roberta Turner. Uh, Keen Pauline, she was a homebred graded stakes winner. Hi. Uh, she won the Black Eyed Susan stakes. So she's gone through our whole program. So she was born on this farm. Her dam is named Grand Pauline. She's one of a, quite a few mares that we have that are named after Miss Banky's mother, Pauline. She was born on this farm. She went to our yearling farm. When she went through the sales ring, whenever we, we sell yearlings, we can place what's called a reserve on them, which is the uh, minimum price that we'll take for that horse. So she did not meet her reserve, which was fine with us. We kept her and we sent her down to Ocala. She was trained at our training center. She won the grade two Black Eyed Susan and she came here She's had three foals. She had a Medagliadoro colt, who's a two-year-old. Then she has had two, she's had back-to-back Curlin -back fillies. And Keen Pauline's a very friendly mare. So it's starting to drizzle a little bit. So I'll wrap up. You guys have any other questions? Go and say hello to Roberta Turner before we sign off. So I mentioned all of our tours that we've done so far are saved to our YouTube channel. So you can go and catch up on them. And if you want to tune in on Friday on Facebook Live, <laughs> Roberta's scratching herself on the fence. If you turn in, tune in on Friday, Facebook Live. We'll visit with Rachel Alexandra. We don't have any Franco foals. So because horses are, you know, we have to breed thoroughbreds via live cover. You have to send them to the, the stallion. Oh, I love all these horses, Robin. So it's easy for me to remember them. They've all got their individual personalities. They're all very special. So on Friday, we'll do that tour at 2 p.m. So in the future, we're hoping that we'll be able to do both Facebook and Instagram for a single tour. But for now, we're limited to just one. So we won't do Instagram on Friday, but as I mentioned, they are all saved to our YouTube channel. You don't need to have a YouTube account in order to watch those videos. And they will stay out here in the rain. As I mentioned, they, they'll only go up if the storm gets really serious. And we don't do embryo transfer for thoroughbreds. You can for quarter horses, but not for thoroughbreds. <laughs> so I'll wrap up here, guys. If any last minute questions. So stay safe, everyone. You guys have a nice day, and I hope you tune in on Friday. We'll visit with our mares and foals at the Zinfandel Barn.
and we'll see Rachel Alexandra. Bye.